Hey, recorder players, I'm coming to you live from Miss E's house. I'm here with Coda. Right now, you're only seeing the back of her. She's being a little shy right now, but maybe we'll get her up to say hi to us in just a little bit. Maybe with my great recorder playing, she'll want to join. So I'd like to ask for you, if you've already watched Recorder 101, then you've done the following things. Number one, you've gotten a recorder, which is really good because you're going to need one for our third rotation of music class. Number two, on that recorder, you have written both your name on the case and on the recorder in Sharpie. So on your recorder, you could write it in Sharpie right below the thumb hole, or you could go right above here in this little section on the mouthpiece. Just put your initials, that's all you need. Also, the case, it's gotta be in the case. Please don't forget to bring your case to music class. Remember, it spreads germs if you don't. So let's really try and get that covered. Today, we're gonna talk about breathing and start getting just started on that how, how we're gonna play that recorder. So let's just talk about a few of these things. You can practice at home, and then when you come into music class, you'll feel a little bit more ready. So when I'm sitting, I like to sit on the floor. If you wanna sit in a chair, that's fine, but in music class, we're gonna be sitting on the floor. So we might as well know what it feels like. So I'm sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor. I'm pulling up my string really tall like we talk about in music class. I don't wanna slump over because that's not gonna help my breath. I need a lot of good breath support to be able to sing and be able to play my instruments. So I'm gonna sit up really tall. Now you see Miss E has her recorder on a lanyard. If you get a lanyard for your recorder, that's great. If not, it won't be any problem at all. Um, but we're really looking forward at some point to you get a lanyard, but you've got to get through your recorder black belt first, and then Miss E will give you a lanyard. That'll be pretty cool. So I want to talk to you about breathing now in your recorder. There's a couple different ways to breathe, and I just want to kind of explain those to you so it makes sense. So one thing we have to remember is all of our breath has to be super tiny. You can't do a lot of breath into the recorder, like a big sound because it's going to squeak and it's not going to sound good. So one of the battles of playing the recorder is knowing how hard to blow and to blow that breath out. So we have to really work on it a lot. So I've got a couple things to show you today and one of them is the candle. So we're not going to practice with a real flame. We're just going to pretend. So here's just a birthday candle and I want you to imagine that it's lit. And all I'm trying to do is blow a breath that does not blow out the candle but makes the candle move a little bit. So let's imagine I do that, and all I'm just gonna do is a little tiny D-O-H, a D-O-H, a doll. So I'm gonna go like this. Just like that. Did you see how I did that? So my tongue is moving up and down. I'm saying D-O-H, but I'm not actually saying it. It's not doll, doll. I'm just going And the breath comes out and makes that sound. Let's try again. When I do that, oh, bye, Coda. Maybe she'll, oh, Coda. I don't think she's going to hang out. Maybe she'll come back later. So that's one way. The other way to do it is I want you to think about doing something called tiny T's. Tiny T's are thinking more, I'm going to blow out a cooler breath. So imagine that I've got soup. I get up some of that hot soup way too hot and all I want to do is a little breath that is going to cool off my soup but do I want my soup to splatter off the spoon no way so I'm going to do a T just a T U H a t -t sound I'm gonna do it so tiny so that I'm just kind of moving that soup a little bit trying to cool it off but I'm not letting it bounce off. So those are a couple different things. We have tiny T's and we have our tiny D's. Tiny T's and tiny D's. If we're doing tiny D's, that's gonna give us a warmer breath. Sort of like, let's do the second thing. I want you to imagine that you've been outside in the snow and your hands are really cold and you wanna blow a warm breath into those hands. So you would go. So you wanna get a nice warm breath. Hey Coda, welcome back. So I want you to think about warm breath and cool breath. We're gonna be focusing today on the warm breath because I wanna challenge you with a note that usually only advanced players can play. The note we're gonna to play today is called E and we're gonna start on E because I just think we should do it. So I want you to know you're playing the opposite hand that I am. Your left hand has to be on the top. So one way you can do that is look at your L's 
and choose the one that looks like the L in the right direction. For you, it's gonna be this hand. So be sure you're using this hand. That's your left hand. I'm gonna use my left hand, which is on this side. Okay, so be the opposite of me. I'm gonna put my thumb of my left hand on that back thumb hole, and I've gotta press it really hard. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the top hole, the second hole, and the third hole. And guess what, this pinky never plays. The pinky is always out. Sort of like if you were drinking tea at a very fancy place, you want your, your pinky out. That's what this pinky does. And then two fingers from my right hand come and cover up those next two holes. So I'm covering up a, a total of six holes. The three here, the two here, and the thumb on the back. This is gonna be E, and we are challenging ourselves to play E. So this is what we're gonna do. Be prepared to squeak. We're gonna do the best we can. I'm gonna play, and then you're gonna play back. So we're just gonna do our simple echo patterns. I play, you play, okay? We're gonna use our DOH. It's gonna go like this. Okay, I'm gonna go first. I play, you play. One, two, Miss E first. Now you play that. Okay, Miss E first. Now you play. Notice a couple things about the way that I'm playing. Number one, you don't see my cheeks go like this. We don't want the fish cheeks. So I'm not going, none of that. I'm moving my tongue, that's why I have to do my tiny Ds. So my tongue moves. And as I do that, I'm gonna be sure that my lips are almost super glued around the mouth of my recorder. I'll do it again. Remember, we're playing E. Thumb on the back hole, covering up all these holes, and you've got to really cover them up and feel the circles underneath your fingers. One, two, Miss E goes first. Now you play it. Very good. If you are getting a squeaky sound, don't be hard on yourself. The E is not easy to play, and it might be squeaky for a little while until you get that really warm breath. But what I want you to do is go back and practice those E's with me again. When you hear my E, your goal is to match up the sound so it sounds like mine. If it's sounding a little high or a little squeaky, keep adjusting your breath until you get the sound that you want. So that's E. I'm gonna show you one more note. So this is the note people traditionally play when they start recorder. The note is called B. We're gonna start with B. So I'm gonna take off that right hand, but do you see my thumb is still gonna sit there? And I'm gonna lift that up. So at any time, if I wanted to add those fingers back in, I could. So I'm gonna keep my right thumb always ready and keep my recorder really stable. I'm gonna put it right here on my chin so everybody can see what I'm doing. Make sure your left hand is on top. So it's the opposite of mine. So your hand, your left hand, this is the one that should be on the top, okay? So I'm playing a B, and this one we're gonna do tiny T's. So we're gonna do that cooler breath and we get to go like this. Tongue is still moving. Remember, none of this, none of that. Okay, let's play some B's. Miss E goes first, one, two, Miss E goes first. Nice and light, don't play too loud. Really tiny. Very nice. Now, I'm gonna show you something that you really need to see. I call them warts. I'm gonna take my fingers off the recorder and I'm gonna see if I can show these to you. So if you look really closely, you'll see I've got a little circle on my finger. Do you see that? You'll also see one on my thumb. Whoa, that's a big one. Now those, I call them warts. Are they real warts? No, and they'll go away. I can rub them away. But they do show you that my hole of my recorder was right in the center of my finger. Do you see that? If you are starting to get your warts on the tips of your fingers, then we wanna try and get them in the center. 
So that's something that can help you a lot too. If you're not getting warts on your fingers and you've been pressing and you're really trying to play a B and you don't have them on those fingers, I'd like for you to readjust and press hard and get those warts. Hey guys, that's all for today. You can go back and repractice working on E and B. That would be great. Maybe you're better at B. Maybe you're better at E. Maybe right now both of them are squeaky. Don't worry about it. Just have fun. See if you can get your left hand on top and figure out those fingerings. I'm so proud of you. Let's bring Coda back out. Hey, Coda, come here. I think Coda's proud of you too. Here she comes. And everybody, I will see you in music class. Keep playing your recorder. If you haven't watched Recorder 101, I want you to go back and check and make sure that you can do it. You're doing a great job. I'm proud of you, and I'll see you in music class.